You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Good Morning Lambo. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. You can email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Text us 865-658-5824. Joining alongside Tim live in Green Bay, we got Emilio, believe it or not, is up and at it right here in uh, in Tennessee. And we got Carly Ray on the line with us as well. How's everybody doing this morning? We good? Yeah, good. doing great. Doing good. well. Mm-hmm. Good deal, Emilio. It's good to see you in here, man. Last yeah. night you were you, <laughs> you were smiling a lot on the live stream last night. We were yeah. a little bit like, okay, Emilio may sleep in, but he's doing good. He's no, good. no, I did. Yeah, I did. I did end up texting you guys uh, last night after after we got off. But no, yeah, I was feeling good. It was a good Are you time. Sure you texted and, us. Are you sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> Let me see here. Oh yeah, you did. That's right. The gift. Yeah, that's a good gift too. By the way. But uh, no, yeah, I'm I'm doing good, man. Got a little rain this morning, but I still gotta yeah get up to oh. the job later on. Speaking of gift, are we beyond the debate now? Is it gift or gif? I've always said gift. Is it gift, guys? I'm with. I, I say gif. Okay. Yeah. Carly, GIF is a voice of reason here. Is it GIF or GIF? <laughs> you know what? I am probably the absolute least qualified person to do this because I am not up with, you know, the whatever you times. Know. But I, I do say I did say GIF. And then my husband corrected me and said it's GIF, Carly. Right? It's GIF. So I will I will defer to my husband on that one. He says it's GIF. Gotcha. You think God never farted? He probably did from time to time. Um, yeah, so it's GIF. Tim. You uh, slapped me in the face with a little bit of news that went completely by me yesterday, uh, this morning. Why don't you tell the uh, the listeners, the viewers, uh, and Carly, you could chime in too. You guys have kind of read the article extensively. It sounds like Packers Wire um, was was hitting at something yesterday, and, and Matt Schneidman leading the charge there too. What did you uncover, man? Yeah, Schneidman is uh, reporting that none other than John Runyon Jr. has uh, his reps have been meeting with the Packers during the scouting combine. So uh, it looks like there is a, quote, mutual interest in JRJ returning to the Packers in 2024. Gotcha. So that one kind of flew under the radar. Um, He's going to be 27 in August. They're basically looking for a scenario where the, you know, the the price is right for both sides. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm assuming I'm assuming it's going to be a a team friendly kind of deal. if we do have JRJ back. Um, so I don't know how uh, how you guys feel about that, but certainly kind of changes things a little bit. I don't think it throws our draft boards out of whack or anything like that, but um, right. certainly looking at uh, the possibility of JRJ coming back. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Carly, you, you dove into the article a little bit too. Did you gleam anything extra from it or how do you feel about it just on the surface here? Well, I was actually really impressed with how um, – Zach Cruz, I think, is the one that wrote that article, like how he was able to get enough information for an entire art- article out of what was essentially just a tweet by Matt Schneiden, because there's no article on The Athletic about it as of yet. So I really think it was just kind of a, hey, Matt overheard that um, that Runyon's new agent had met with the Packers and tweeted about it. And then Zach put the news out there with a bit of background information. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. It seems like it's still very up in the air. I wouldn't read too much into it. 
Okay, got it. Yeah. So just something to keep our eye on. Obviously, the PFF grades for John Runyon Jr. starting in 2021 were 64.6, 62.6, and dipped all the way to 56.5. He had that emotional uh, locker room interview as they were cleaning out their lockers at the end of the season. He he definitely wants to be a Packer. I think he's a stand-up dude, no doubt about it. But they've got his projected contract at $6.6 million per year. Um, man. Yeah. They, That's deep. Zach Cruz hit on that in the article a little. He said, although the cost to retain Runyon wouldn't likely be significant, the Packers must also factor in a strong O-line class in the 2024 draft with the Packers' 11 draft picks when determining whether or not to allocate cap dollars to a veteran player who's been solid but occasionally inconsistent for most of his uh, first four seasons here. Yeah, man, I just – after you said that, Tim, I just remembered when when we were doing Chalk Talk and my dude was on his head and his legs were up in the air (laughs) – and I was like, you know what, man? It, it, I get set in the floor. I do get set in the floor, and I get Goody wanting the competition. But yeah, like like Clayton was. I mean, dude's a stand up guy, right? We love him for that. But uh, man, when when you're upside down on chalk talk, that's a problem. <laughs> or when, or how many how many stills did we have of him facing Jordan? Oh Love? yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. he's watching ball. Jordan Love throw the deep ball, right? <laughs> The other thing, too, I like how the article said he was solid but inconsistent. That's like saying, that's like saying, yeah, it was dry, but it was also soaking wet outside. It's like, what are we, what are we doing here? Um, again, as a backup, someone who knows the system, um, I would have no problem with it. But to the tune of $6.6 million if if spot track, by the way, I want to give a shout out to someone. I think they uncovered it here. Greg in Green Bay says, I listened to a spot track podcast. The name is pronounced spot track so we now have an answer there at least that's what they're calling themselves and in 2024 you got to call people what they say they are you know what i'm saying right so we're going to stick to the script there and call them spot track but they identify as spot track correct yeah and i'm going to screw that up a thousand times i will screw it up a thousand times i promise you you guys will go clayton spot track not spot track so there you go um All right, let's see here. Uh, Back to Omer. He said, they said both sides have interest at the right price. Cheap for the Packers, but he's not a starter. He's a sub and not the answer. Um, Hopefully that's the case, right? And, and again, you know, Spot Track and some of these other websites, when they do the projected market value, they're typically real close. But, yeah, I can't imagine they spend a whole lot of time in some of these potential backup players as far as getting the numbers exactly right. So um, just something to kind of keep our eye on there as free agency inches closer for sure. Um, Let's see here. Adam Block said last year, I was Dunyan with Runyon. I see what you did. Are you doing that, rim, <laughs> doing that rim shot, Tim? Can I get one of those rim shots there, man? Yeah. Got, I think Adam. There it is. All right. William Gould in the chat, not not uh, Levingston, but Gould, mm-hmm. said, poor start for John Runyon Jr., but a good finish is no guarantee a draft choice uh, can start. You know, there's some there's some truth to that, That's William. That's true. We saw that with Sean Ryan, right? Yeah. We got the big boy's belly hanging over the belt. Said, that dude's an offensive lineman. He didn't look Nacho like Libre. That. You know what I'm saying? Nacho Libre. He really did look like Nacho Libre. By the way, if you guys have never seen Nacho Libre, highly recommend. Some of Jack Black's finest work. Yeah. It was a uh, – yes, it's a really, really good movie. Really good movie. So, well, so uh, it's, it's a drama. drama. It's a drama, and, you know, it's it's kind of emotional and this and that, but uh, serious <laughs> serious flick, that type of movie. But, yeah, go check it out for sure. What would you say, Emilio? I said, well, so is School of Rock, some of his finest work. Oh, School absolutely. Of, School of Rock was really good, man. Tenacious D to come on, man. Tenacious. I like Jack Black. Other than that, creep. What was that creepy movie where he was in love with Cloris Leachman? That was on The Office. Was that a real movie or was that just a spoof? I think that was just part of their their script. I was so I'm I'm sincerely hoping so. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. I remember when she's going up when she's going up the staircase. (laughs) Everybody (laughs) thinks of that. Come back. I can just imagine how much they had to pay her for that. She must have got the bank. For that, <laughs> yeah. it's the off season. We're over here talking about Jack Black, right? No doubt about that. So, um, let's do this real quick. Uh, we had a tweet come out from Coach Ed. If you guys don't know who Coach Ed is, it's at D Line Coach Ed, and he basically specializes in helping defensive linemen. Um, the the majority of what I've seen him work with is pass rush skills, but he's kind of a, uh, a defensive line specialist, if you will. There's been several players that's worked out with him. I think last year there was a picture post of a coach Ed that was Kenny Clark, TJ Slayton, and several other people. He tweeted this out. He said, back to Cali, year two for LVN. 
Uh, Lucas Van Ness, Packers fans should be excited for the jump. It's coming with a dancing emoji there, right? And then he posted a video too, tweeted a video out, and there shouldn't be any sound to this. But you'll see Carl Brooks here working mm. and Kenny Clark right there, big KC in the mix too. Now, let's pause it again. I think I've seen someone else. Is that Jonathan Ford right there? Kind of looks like Jonathan Ford, don't Yeah, it? in the green. Yep. yep, yep. So Carl Brooks, Jonathan Ford, allegedly, and uh, Kenny Clark out there uh, working together with Coach Ed. Uh, you love to see it, don't you, Tim? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of my highlights of uh, going to camp is watching the D-line uh, get their work in. So it's good to see them, you know, no days off. Uh, we've seen it with uh, Tay Wicks and Jaden Reed on the offensive side putting in work. Um, and now we see our our big D-line group uh, getting some extra reps. And this is uh, this is exactly what Preston Smith was referring to when he talked about having a championship offseason. Mm -hmm. uh, he really stressed that with a lot of the guys on the team. So clearly the message uh, was received because we're seeing a lot of these uh, these tweets and these, uh, I, I don't want to call them reports, but little mm -hmm. little video shots of uh, guys doing their offseason program, which is uh, good to see because they could – could be at home with, uh, you know, a few daddy sodas hanging out with Emilio, but uh, instead they're uh, putting that work in. <laughs> yeah, I got to get me a pair of these shorts, Emilio. I bet you were wearing shorts like that walking down uh, Alcoa Highway 2 a.m. this morning. Dude, that's the truth. Those are kind of, those are kind of fresh, actually. I mean, <laughs> you, know, you know Kenny's got the style, but I love to see it, and I, I'm excited to see Carl Brooks. I'm excited to see, you know, LVN, the rookies that um, didn't have to go through all that draft process this year, actually being able to work out this summer and – get better so it's gonna be it's exciting you see how fast his hands are oh it's crazy man crazy yeah what do you think carly pretty cool seeing the uh the guys get together here in the off season get some work in right yeah yeah it is it is pretty neat it's fun to still feel engaged and like they didn't just disappear off the face of the earth when the off season came so yeah it's good to see them working out and having yeah. fun like we all would, right? <laughs> if you had to put your body through that, I would just disappear, man. These guys would stay at it, though. No doubt about it. Um, all right, let's see here. Ch -ch -ch. William Gould in the chat said, Ryan took three years, and we still have questions. So why do we think a draft pick can just step right in? Who's he talking about, Ryan? Ryan who? Ryan. Sean, Ryan. Ryan. Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan. Has he been with us three years already? Well, yeah, uh, this would be his third year, I believe. Gotcha, okay. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, man, for sure. Um, there's no can, I, can I add something about that? Yeah, that absolutely. I just learned. Mm -hmm. So I guess the agent that he hired, that um, John Runyon Jr. hired, is Drew Rosenhaus, and he's got a whole, like, business doing this, you know, this sort of, mm -hmm. like, negotiating stuff. And I guess he's known as pretty uh, – pretty pretty prolific in his in getting good deals oh, for yeah. his players so i really hope that the packers resist the pressure to overpay but just get just That's, pay what he's what he's worth what they want isn't that Aaron Rodgers' agent Drew Rosenhouse, uh, no, that's that's David Dunn Drew oh, Rosenhouse is the OG Drew Rosenhouse to give you guys a good snapshot of who he is and i'm not dogging him he's one of the best agents in the history of the game he was Terrell Owens' agent through the whole debacle of him doing crunches in his driveway and all that, right? That, so that's the advice. <laughs> you guys driveway. go watch Jerry Maguire. Drew Rosenhaus was actually the advisor in that movie to kind of feed them information on how the agent's everyday operation works. If you've, not, if you've never seen Jerry Maguire, go watch it. Bit of a love story, but – Really, really, and I'm being serious. I'm like the, you know, I was being, I was joking with, with Nacho Libre, but just <laughs> it, kind of a love story. But it takes you behind the scenes of an agent and and his friendship with a player and and all that, and um, kind of a, an agent waking up one day and feeling guilty for taking advantage of people and and that whole law degree and everything behind the scenes. So really good movie, man. It was, I think it was, came out back in the mid '90s. I remember watching it as a kid. It was one of the reasons I wanted to get into. Uh, business management, more specifically sports business management. So, um, yeah, really, really good flick there for sure. So, yeah. With that being said, does anybody got anything they want to hit on before we dive into some of the other topics I've got here? We got the free agent tracker pull up. We can kind of roll through the league real quick and see exactly what's happened in that regard. But, Tim, Emilio, Carly, anyone, do you got something you want to hit on before it gets buried here? I'm going to do it. All right. Cool. Let's go here. Uh, let's see here. Omer in the chat says, saw your post. Uh, Clayton said Reggie was the best free agent signing ever. Chris Jones could be the second uh, with the silly emoji there. Um, Chris Jones, hey, man. Uh, it's just the con. You know, when Reggie came in, Reggie was just 
he was instantly the best play. In my opinion, he was the best player in the league, right? I don't think Chris Jones is on Reggie Watt's level. Not that you're saying he is, Omer, but um, uh, with Reggie, though, it was it was I think it was very, very different, very different. Chris Jones approaching 30 years old, um, obviously uh, had some issues in the past as far as trying to hold out for this, that and, and the other. But uh, we'll see what happens, man. I, I personally am not interested in Chris Jones um, just because of the age. If it was three years ago, absolutely. And he was playing at that level. But for me, I've just, I just—I would have to respectfully disagree there. Um, let's see here. All right, William Gould, Clayton. If you let your hair grow a little bit, you would look a lot like Goody. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, my man. But we're gonna we're gonna keep shaving <laughs> off the sides here and try to make the. I agree, William. That's a good take. I agree. Oh, you Lord. sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a key when you got when you got a tadpole head like mine. You got to shave the sides and try to make it look skinny. You know what I'm saying, Emilio? You got to yeah. keep it. You got to keep it shaved off the sides and and give that illusion that you don't have a, a pumpkin head. But that's just <laughs> that's a story for another another pod. There. All right, let's do this. Let's dive into. Let's go around the league real quick. You guys good with it? And just kind of see what's going on with free agency as far as these these last second cuts. Um, so we're just going to go team by team real quick, rattling it off. You guys stop me if there's anything you want to hit on. But we're just going to go, like I said, through the through the whole league here, the most recent transactions that kind of impact free agency. Um, it says the uh, offensive tackle Ryan Bates traded to the Bears in exchange for Chicago's 2024 fourth-round pick. So they traded with Buffalo for offensive tackle Ryan Bates for a fourth-round pick. Scroll down to New England. Obviously, Kyle Duggar got the transition tag. Um, we go down to the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens. Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver, signed a one-year extension with the team. Defensive lineman Justin Matabuke, um, Matabuke received the franchise tag all right, for $22 million. The Cincinnati Bengals franchise tag T. Higgins, which is $21.8 million. Uh, scrolling on down, you'll see several teams don't have any news. That's great. Uh, tied in Dalton Schultz with the Houston Texans is re-signing on a three-year, $36 million deal that includes $23.5 million fully guaranteed uh the indianapolis Colts slapped the franchise tag on wide receiver michael pittman for 21.8 million dollars you see a trend going across the league that there's receivers getting hit with that franchise tag so you could tell the market is still blimp in the wide receiver room but it's cool because the packers have one of the cheapest wide receiver rooms in the league and they will right. remain that way for the next two years which is really exciting so um, let's see here. Jacksonville Jaguars edge. Josh Allen received the non-exclusive franchise tag, which will pay him $24 million for the 2024 season. Um, scrolling on down, Kansas City Chiefs. Legereus Sneed obviously got the franchise tag for 19.8. Uh, they signed Matt Araza uh, to a deal for the league minimum. The punter. You guys remember punt gods, what they referred to him as. He, he got tried for, like, rape or something. And if I understood correctly, I'm a little bit ignorant here with this whole topic. I probably shouldn't even comment on it. But if I understand on the surface, it was it's been proven that she lied about it and kind of like destroyed his life. Now, maybe he did some wrong in there, too, and I don't know about it, but that's kind of that's him. He was arguably the best punter in the league when that happened. And the bills cut loose of him because there was just so much smoke around that. Um, but it sounds like he's been cleared of all wrongdoing or at least most wrongdoing. I guess you could say he's back in the league. That was a really, really odd situation there. But if I understood correctly, I think he got cleared on those charges. But um, so they signed him. They being, uh, let's see, the Kansas City Chiefs. So um, their special teams just got a lot better if he could stay on the field. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles tied in Albert. Whoo. Say it for me, Emilio. Who? That's close um, enough. Oh, yeah. Oqua Bagadam, I think. Uh, Who? <laughs> one year extension <laughs> with the Eagles linebacker Julian Okwara signed a uh, to a free agent contract with the team. And then let's see what else we got. NFC North, like we said, Ryan Bates acquired from the Bills in exchange for the fourth round pick. Cornerback Jalen Johnson did get the franchise tag, so he will be returning. He was the highest grade corner in the league last year. Uh, let's see if he keeps it up. You know, the fact that they wouldn't give him an extension kind of tells me that it, it, that decision to not give him a long term extension and just franchise tag him lines up with the PFF grades where last year he was just off the charts, but the two previous years, not so much. Uh, in Detroit, you got linebacker Jalen Reeves Maven agreed to a two year extension for up to uh, $8 million, including 5.2 guaranteed. They also signed kicker Michael Badgley to a, uh, a one year deal there. And uh, let's see, NFC South, we got long snapper news. We're not worried about that. Right? Nice. 
Yeah. <laughs> nice. Man, another long snapper. He's humming that later. <laughs> yeah, Liam McCulloch re-signed with the Falcons. All right. Carolina Panthers edge Brian Burns received a franchise tag for $24 million. Um, Tampa Bay, obviously, they re-signed Mike Evans to a two-year $52 million deal, and then they put the franchise tag on Antoine Winfield Jr. Tim, we nailed that one, didn't we? We said yeah. probably going to re-sign one of those two guys and franchise the other one. They got both those players back, don't they, man? Absolutely, and Mike Evans deserves every nickel of that contract for sure. Um, so good for him down there. But, yeah, I was uh, holding out hope that maybe we'd have a shot at uh, moving some money around and snagging Ant- Antoine Winfield Jr. for our for our secondary, but uh, ultimately figured that was going to gonna happen. So, yeah. The hey, and Tim, was- did you t- – Tim, when Go you ahead. were – when we talked a few days ago about – about them maybe there was that thing like maybe they wouldn't use the tag on Winfield Jr. that the article basically said we hope to make a deal and not be forced to use the tag on it like they were going to keep him come hell or high water I think yep dude he is hey U.S. Cellular customers I've got good news so don't hit skip forward just yet I'm talking about their special customer event us days What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com. He is a good football player. And here's what's crazy. When you get him on a one-year deal, which is essentially what the non-exclusive franchise tag is, um, guess what? He's still playing for his career. You're going to get the best version of him rather than signing a three- or four-year deal and it's okay, I got a little bit of money. Maybe not that you would not try hard, but you're a little more aware of the injury concerns. You're a little more aware of how you treat your body as opposed to, all right, man, I got to go out here and do it again to earn a contract, right? Yep. Um, kind of playing for your football life. There's there's motivation there. It's kind of like when we drafted Jordan Love and it lit a fire under Aaron Rodgers, right? There's little moves you can make like that that really does, uh, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, kind, kind of put you in a position where the player, their back is against the wall a bit and you're going to get the best version of them for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, L.A. Rams wide receiver Demarcus Robinson re-signed one-year deal worth $5 million. Um, Again, just wanted to rattle through those real quick to kind of keep everybody – um, informed as to what's going on around the league and free agency and all that good stuff. Emilio, anything there that stood out to you that that, that surprised you or anything that you think might, might affect the uh, the Packers that are moving forward? No, Bears are still cooking, obviously, getting their tackle from the Bills. They're doing their thing, letting it ride. But, mm-hmm. no, man, it's going to – it'll start picking up here in a week. So that that's, that's when that list is going to be three pages long and we'll be reading it for a whole show. Going to be some last second cuts for sure. Carly, yeah. you had a question about the franchise tag. What, what was that? So, this is, I guess, for the people that still feel pretty new to figuring this stuff out. But why would a team, why would a team not use the franchise tag? It seems like quite a benefit, but to have, I think, only nine teams actually use it. What is the reason to not use a franchise tag, at least on somebody that you know you want to keep? I'll give you, I'll give you a two word answer Devontae Adams. And what I mean by that is, they, they kind of played hardball with Devontae, right? He wanted a contract, uh, they being the Packers, of course. He wanted a contract, and they drug their feet a year out. And and basically, Devontae said it in an interview that they, they more or less said to him, we want to see it one more year. And Devontae's reason was like, hold up. Everything I've done for the organization, I continue to dominate. And you want to see one more year? So he felt disrespected, right? So 
they he broke off contract negotiations said, I want to test free agency. Well, as soon as they slapped that franchise tag on a player, what it's saying to the player is, and when it when it originally came out, I remember it was like the early 2000s when this rule hit. And I remember thinking, oh, this is cool. This is a way to for a team to tell a player, hey, you're our franchise player. It's actually quite the opposite. Yeah. Which, it's pretty common practice in business, right, Emilio? Yeah. Typically, if somebody's peeing on your leg, it's probably not raining. They're going to tell you it's raining, but it really ain't raining. Like, so what it does, Carly, is it's you don't want to let this player go, but you don't match value in their eyes. So you're going to kind of handcuff them. Hey, look, yes, it's fully guaranteed, absolutely. And if you trade on that contract and travel and they can negotiate a new contract with the new team, much like Devontae Adams did. But that's the scenario that really pops up in my mind, Carly, is they said, all right, well, no, we're slapping the franchise tag on you. And Tay got pissed. That's what led to the Okay, trade. so it was his last, so it was his it was his last year in Green Bay that they used the franchise tag. And after that, he was like, I'm out. Actually, it was the year they traded him. They slapped the franchise tag on him. And he, which never happens in Green Bay, he caused a little bit of an uproar. He was like, I'm not playing under the tag. I'm not playing under the tag. So now as an organization, you step back and go, all right, is this worth upsetting the locker room? And it's not just our, our player is upset and his teammates really like him. Another thing is you've got guys in that locker room that are coming up on contract years, and they want to know that a team's willing to commit to a player, right? And if they're not willing to commit to the best player on the roster – what is whether you agree with it, I agree with it or not, that message starts to go through the locker room. And yeah. these guys are having daddy sodas behind the scenes and they're talking about this stuff. So that's why, in my opinion, you know, for even from a business owner standpoint, you want to avoid that. You want to go to these players a year early and go, hey, look, we want you to be a long term solution. And typically what happens if you sign a player to a long term contract, waiting un- instead of waiting until that final year, what will happen is you can get anywhere from a 10 to a 15, maybe even a 20 percent discount on the market value because you're going to them and going, we want you to be a part of this. Right. It's that hometown discount, if you will. Now, some mm-hmm. players will pay hardball, play hardball because they want out of one out of a, a team, you know, one out of an organization. And those their goal is to get out regardless. But anything I missed there, Tim, Emilio, is that, that you guys agree with that? Disagree no. with that? Oh, that's spot on. Yeah, I think you hit it. You know, franchise tag can really make a player upset, uh, you know, and it's not something they're looking for. It's not something they want to have, you know, carry on. So it's, uh, like you said, guaranteed money, but not what they're looking for. Right. And and back to your question, like Carly, it's a it's a great question. And you're looking at it through the eyes of the team, the organization, the business side. Heck, yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. You don't have right. to commit. You're paying them the market value. And what it means is if you – if you designate a player as a franchise player, you're saying he's one of, if not the best at his position, they average that out over the top three or top five players at that position, whatever it is. So that's how they come up with that number and it's fully guaranteed. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, especially this time of year. I'm just glad that the Packers have nobody that we're that's in that camp right now, right. That you're kind of worried about, Dang, are we going to have to try to slap that franchise tag? I, I think Goody might've, I think Goody might have underestimated that situation a little bit. I think he thought, well, we can get him. And mm-hmm. he ended up going and offering more money to Tay. It was right? too late. It, it was, was too, too late. late. Tay was, right. yeah. But Tay a good was, learning, but a really good learning experience for Goody moving forward. Like I'm, I'm why why let's not put ourselves in that situation with a you know with a premier player moving forward. Right. And typically they will sign players to that third contract or the second contract, I say. Mm-hmm. Typically they'll draft a player, they'll sign them to an extension if they're a good player. And then if there's a player that's like a generational talent, kind of like Tay, I think we would all agree he's probably a Hall of Famer. Um, typically, they'll get that third contract, right? right. And some of these other players, they let them go ahead and walk, and it, it ticks people off. Like Jordy Nelson, for instance, right? Got one contract, came time for the second. They didn't give him the contract, but I don't think anybody's sitting there saying Jordy Nelson is a Hall of Famer. I think he's one of our favorite players, absolutely, but he's mm-hmm. not on Tay's level, right? Um, so typically it's those – it's those players that are generational top talents that get that third contract in Green Bay. Ron in the chat said 100% goes on the salary cap also, right? This is what's strange, Ron. Um, I think that's the case with the franchise tag, but also um, you have your uh, – God, what is it? The uh, fifth-year options, right? I've always heard that the fifth-year option for a rookie, uh, for off, coming off a rookie contract, if you've got a first-round pick, you can tag them with a fifth-year option. That's so many guaranteed, you know, guaranteed dollars like – uh, Rashawn Gary's was 10 million, right? Um, Darnell Savage's last year was whatever, 7.8 million, something like that, right? Um, 
But if you trade them, that contract travels. Also, though, which kind of applies with the franchise tag, the other thing, they were able to add voidable years and spread that fifth-year option out for Darnell Savage. I wasn't aware of that going into last year. So um, I'm not sure if 100% of it goes on the salary cap this current year, but it does have to be allocated as guaranteed money. Absolutely, Ron. You can't get out of it if you slap the franchise tag unless, of course, you trade that player. So hopefully that answers your question, buddy. And, again, I don't understand understand everything about the tags and the, and the cap and everything. This is just – if you guys have heard different or see it different, let me know in the chat because we're all kind of uh, – we're kind of learning as we go together here. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Andres, hey, guys, can you explain the difference between tags? See, there's – we're getting into some muddy water there too. Let's see. I had it as a screen grab before. Um, you guys chat for a minute, Carly, Tim. I'll see if I can pull up the difference in the tags because I would like to be act, completely accurate on this. I know we lost Emilio. He must have – must be refilling his uh his breakfast daddy soda over there. <laughs> I know. So I was looking some stuff up, and I know that with the exclusive, like the, and I'm just going to add this in because I only know a little bit, and then everybody else fill in the gaps. But the exclusive tag, exclusive franchise tag, that the player cannot negotiate with other teams or cannot like talk mm-hmm. to other teams um, about stuff. But a non-exclusive franchise tag. Um, is free to negotiate with other teams, but I'm not sure how they determine who gets one or the other, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. So I think I've got it pulled up here. Here we go. Um, what is a franchise tag in the NFL? A non-exclusive franchise tag. Um, definition rules. A non-exclusive franchise tender shall be a one-year NFL player contract for, and it says the average of the five largest prior year salaries for players at that position. So that's the franchise we talked about. Exclusive franchise tag. Um, says, uh, let's see, the exclusive franchise tender shall be a one-year NFL player contract for the average of the five largest there. So um, the non, the non-exclusive, that's what's throwing me off a little bit. here. What is the difference between the non-exclusive and the exclusive? I thought there was just one franchise tag. Evidently, there's two. The transition tag is when you're getting, you're getting uh, tossed around a lot today. Um, it says it's another tag that is less often used. The trans the transition tag operates in a similar fashion to the non-exclusive tag, but with a few catches. The price tag is determined by the cap percentage average of the 10 largest prior year salaries at the player's position or 120% of his previous season's salary, whichever is higher. A player on the transition tag can negotiate with other teams like those on the non-exclusive tag and can be extended an offer sheet. However, if the player's current team can't match the offer to the other team, that player can sign with the other team, which would not have to provide any form of compensation to his previous team. All right. And then, of course, we got uh, the different values and stuff as far as like uh, when you tag a player with a certain round uh, tender. Right. Like we seen that with Josh Nyman last year. We signed Josh Nyman to a four million dollar tender or whatever. Right. Um, with that tender tag. With it being four million, that fell into the second round compensation uh, category. So another team could have paid him more, but they would have had to given the Packers a second round pick, if I understood correctly. So it, it, the water the water gets very very muddy, Andres. When we get in there, the majority of the time, the only one you need to know are the tenders, and, and kind of the value has to match what you're willing to take in draft pick compensation for that player. Um, if another team wants to exceed, you know, what it was you offered. And then the franchise tag, of course, is the top three at each position where you can kind of lock a player in. And you can give that franchise tag two years in a row. You can't do it three years in a row, which is uh, the king of that is uh, is definitely Kirk Cousins. He's the king of the franchise tag, no doubt about it. Uh, got a lot of them. I think, he, I made, I think he made over $90 million fully guaranteed in three years or something like that. Um, yeah, it's just wild. You think they uh, put the franchise tag on this? I don't know, Tim. What do you think, Carly? <laughs> she, she's not looking at the screen right now. She's like, oh, God. <laughs> You're welcome, Andres. Thanks nope. for asking the question. I am no longer, no longer looking at the screen. Anybody, anytime Clayton says, can you see this? Or, yeah, we're going to look at this. I'm not looking. I'm just hiding it, not doing it. It, it must be something there in that area where where you and uh, you and Jacob live that the pinky really – the pinky doesn't bother me. I've seen people lose digits, though, have them cut off and stuff. That don't bother me. The thing that gets me though is when the bones break under the skin. Like Oof. you know what I'm like, and I know it's a pinky. I'm talking about legs and stuff. Mandy, if there's an injury like that that happens, she's like, Oh my gosh, what happened? I'm over here going, oh. like I can't, <laughs> I can't take it, man. I cannot take it. 
blood, that stuff doesn't bother me. But, boy, a bone snapping under the skin or, or God forbid, a compound fracture. <sighs> Joe Theismann, can't watch it. Can't oh. do it. Cannot do it, man. So, there. Look, look right here. Professor Cakes. God, I click on the stream. First thing I see is that damn thing. <laughs> Things could be a lot worse. I could be a Bears fan. It could, Jai. You're exactly correct. Um, we got a video here on the wide receiver room, and we got a video on uh, the uh, the history segment. I think we should hit the wide receiver room. If we got time, we'll hit the history. You guys good with that? Yeah. All right, cool. This was from Packers Daily. Obviously, you can find it for free on Packers.com. Uh, their Twitter account tweeted it out, too. Go give it a like, share, all that good stuff, retweet it, um, re-exit, whatever you want to call it. But here is uh, Packers Daily on the wide receiver room and, and kind of the, the young promising roster that we got in that position group where we see a lot of teams of franchise tagging uh, other wide receivers right now across the league. The Packers seem to be set for the foreseeable future. Here we go. He's got the right mindset when the ball's in the air. He's got the mentality that that ball is mine. Love looks, loves his left got side. It. Romeo Dobbs leaping grab. Yes, yes, he's yes. got it. The biggest thing with him is the way he's attacking the football. Strong, aggressive hands and just really good body control. He also ran some pretty spectacular routes. You can just see the talent that he has. It was really fun to watch him. He's got that tiptoeing out of bounds. Having Christian out there, having a guy that can get past the defense, and it's always a threat. Touchdown, Christian Watson! He give different looks for defenses, you know, with his speed, big playability. On a 53-yard field flipping play. Off the left side of the end zone. Don't get it. Another catch. Touchdown, Christian Watson. I just want to be dominant at the line and at the catch. Just knowing that if the ball is coming my way, I'm going to make the play. Cutting back 40. He to the 35, 30. He to the 20, 15. Pull down from behind. Rushes on. Love waits. Fires. Right side end zone. Leaping grab. Watson. Oh. And a sensational wow. grab. Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson have flashed explosiveness in their first two seasons. The pass-catching pair has collaborated for over 2,000 yards and 25 total scores. The Packers had an NFC Best 10 players catch at least one touchdown last year, thanks in large part to a very deep receiving core. We have a very competitive room right now, and I think particularly towards the end of the season, you saw the benefits of having a room like that. You know, to have guys that at any moment could step up and make a big play for us was something that we haven't had in a little while, and it was really good to see. Touchdown, Bo Melton! Matt does such a good job of scheming guys for their skill sets, so no matter what player is in there, you know, he's going to put them in the right place to make plays. All right, there you go. Um, since yeah. we... Since we kind of brung that up, Tim, man, what do you think, dude? Wide I'm receiver fired room. up over here, man. You got me yeah, fired up. Wide receiver room's looking good for the for the future, man. No doubt about it. I know some people were saying, you know, you can go sign one, you can you can draft one in the first round, this and that. They can if the right player falls, but there's no reason to right now, right, man? Man, no, not at all. And I, I just love uh, you know, watching those little uh clips of Scoot doing his thing in Detroit. And you know, that I, I said it when we brought him in, man, that I felt like the dude is top tier talent. It's going to be a star in this league, you know, but the injuries, that's your biggest complaint. And if that's your biggest complaint about a, a young player like that, certainly that's something you can work through. And hopefully, uh, you know, we get a good smattering of Christian Watson in 2024 and um, really see what he can, uh, he can do for us. But yeah, man, we are locked and loaded in that wide receiver room. A um, lot of young talent. Um Malik Heath is a name that comes to mind right away that I'm really excited to see uh, 2024 uh, for him and what he can do to contribute, um, you know, probably a little lower on the depth chart, but certainly a guy that uh, can fill in when guys are out and uh, has proven to be um, excellent in the uh, run blocking game and as well as, um, you know, making some crucial catches on third downs. Uh, I really like Malik Heath. Milio just chimed in in the chat. He said he can block. Yes, he can. So yes, he can. Omer in the chat says eight competent wide receivers in that room plus the tight end room be great too. Got to bring Tyler Davis back though and cut to Guara. I'm okay with Tyler Davis coming back on a minimum contract. Um, I think that it's, it's wild going into that year where he hurt his ACL or, or whatever it was. I think it was an ACL, had the leg injury, knee injury, whatever. Um, you know, that's a guy that, uh, Here's a guy that Matt LaFleur absolutely loved. I mean, he bragged on him constantly, right? So 
I think that would be good depth. If you approach it that way and you bring back Tyler Davis, you get Ben Sims back too, which graded out like a 60 on, on a PFF, which held his own as a, you know, as a player just picked up off the scrap heap. Um, you kind of got a full tight end room and now you can play with the house's money. If a, if a great prospect falls right in your lap and you want to take him and you add even more depth to the tight end room, maybe that opens up some things like what Kansas city likes to do with the 13 personnel. Right. Yep. Um, now the problem with that in the same problem with 12 personnel, you got to take one of those awesome young receivers off the field too, but everybody needs a breather every now and then for sure. Carly, what do you think about the wide receiver room? You got any, uh, any comments there on that video or any, anything regarding it? No, I'm just excited. I'm excited about it. It was real fun last year and I cannot wait to see what they, what they do coming up this year. And I, yeah, I don't really think they need to draft one, but we went into last year, last season thinking that we were just totally set at offensive line, you know, like we were like ready right. to go so deep. And then it was like, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel. And so I'm like, you know what, whatever Goody thinks we need, if we need another one, I am okay with that. I want yeah. options guys. I want options. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the way Goody's looking at it. You know, I heard, I think it was Ron Wolf talk about it. No, it was in a Bill Walsh book, um, a book that was written with a, uh, a guy helped Bill Walsh write it right, right before Bill Walsh passed away. And I was listening to the audio book last summer, which I, I kind of get caught up on my audio books and, and my reading um, during that dead time. Right. And uh, that's why you get a lot of history segments in the off season with me, because that's the stuff I'm diving into trying to understand the, the foundation of the game. But uh, he, you know, he, he talked about many things like that. Bill Walsh did, you know, um, about, you know, just building it from the ground up, building, you know, behind the scenes, what it, what it takes to, to keep uh, the bottom half of the roster healthy and strong. He, I think he had a goal to sign. It was either five or 10 players before the start of the season. After the draft, his his goal was to find it was either five or ten players, not just to put on the roster, but that he would be convinced would make his team better. So, like, this, these five or ten players are going to compete for roster spots with our current roster. Like, he set those goals. Some GMs, I think you can see it. Some GMs go into the uh, – going after the post-draft you know the post -draft period there, and they're like, okay, we're set. Let's go into camp. Bill Walsh wasn't sleeping on his laurels, man. That dude was constantly looking for players behind the scenes uh, to make his team better, no doubt. Uh, Badger Trio said, "Reed, uh, Jaden Reed not being talked, not being in the Rookie of the Year talk was wild to me. I agree. Um, you know, I hate to be that Packer fan that says there's some bias kind of, you know, against the, against the Packers. But, you know, Matt LaFleur never being mentioned in Coach of the Year, um, it just seems like, to me, it seems like the national media does have this vendetta against the Packers. Yeah. And I don't understand it because it, you know, the Packers are the crown jewel of the National Football League. If you go back and watch in the 60s, some of the old NFL films with, I think it was Burt Bell was his name, was the commissioner at the time. They were so proud of the Packers and how important it was for the Packers to be a part of the National Football League. It's why George Hallis helped from time to time for them to get them out of financial struggles. And the fact that the national media just completely craps on them every year, it, it'll happen again this year. It will. Um, you know, I, I tweeted a video of Kyle Brandt going on his little rant right before the Chicago Bears game, and, and there was many people say, he's a Bears fan. It's not that big of a deal. Flush that. He is on the NFL Network. He's on the league's show, right, for Good Morning Football. And he's on there saying, Justin Fields, go in there and burn down Lambeau Field. And it's like, what are we doing? I, I, I'm tuning into the NFL network to get NFL news, not get a stupid Bears fan having his freaking mustache shaved live on the air, him dancing around acting like an absolute moron with a saber in his hand, which, by the way, Angry Runs used to be one of my favorite segments. Now it's so cringy, I can't even stand to look at it. i got to change the channel every damn time. It just it drives me insane that that's supposed to be the NFL's – I don't go on there expecting people to prop the Packers up and be Packer fans. I just don't understand the whole the whole approach of, you know, the bias on an on a network TV show. It's the reason that, in my opinion, they're starting to to go downhill, man. People are looking for content. We got to bring Lombardi home. That's the only way to change any of this crap. And you yeah. watch everyone will be, you know, loving loving the Packers again and talking about our storied history and how we are the greatest story in sports. You know, we got to win a Super Bowl. It's that simple. And, and I, I don't think anything short of that is going to going to garner any of that that respect again. Um, I think that's especially for Coach Lafleur. I mean, that's all that's left. 
Mm-hmm. Right. That is all that's left. We've had division titles. We've been to uh, NFC championship games. We have not gotten over the hump. This team has got to get over the hump and bring Lombardi home before yeah. any of that's going to change. That's just my opinion. Yeah. That's, that's how you shut them up for sure. Ryan went on a, a rant last night and I was, I was just sitting here fist bumping and going to tell him, right? Cause it, it's just wild how, and I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy to kind of go, oh, you know, the media, they're being mean to the Packers. Now I'm looking up, you know, two years after Rodgers is gone. It's like they are really, really rooting for the Packers to fail. <laughs> it cracks me up. Bring it on. They'll bring on the criticism, right? Milltown Corey said there's been a couple reports that Tyler Davis might retire. I haven't heard that, Corey. That's wild, though, man. Uh, I'm looking sure. right now. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Um, He's 26. I mean, yeah. seems a little young. Yeah. If he does, then it's most likely injury related, right? It's one of those things that maybe that injury was a little worse than what we thought. You know, that could be the case. But uh, you guys go do your own research on that. Uh, Corey, I'm sure you heard someone say it somewhere above. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Hopefully that's not the case for uh, for uh, Tyler Davis's sake. You know, you want him to be in and around the league for a long time. And he you know, the thing with him is, is that he's, he's got going for him is his injury was so early last season, right? Yeah, I mean, right. he was – he was hurt relatively early, which means he had all of last year, uh, you know, surgery, rehab, whatever he had to do. So right. I'm not opposed to, you know, taking a crack with him again. I think he could fill that. Um, I certainly think he could fill the uh, Josiah DeGuaro role uh, in that tight end room. Yeah. So since we were talking Mark, about the water. Clayton, yes, Clayton I, just, I just looked up some stuff and scanned it really quick. It looks like I just found some couple articles that came out within the last day on Tyler Davis and just saying that he might be forced to retire because mm-hmm. um, he's hitting free agency and he hasn't had any opportunities in the last year. So therefore, they're kind of making the conclusion that he doesn't really have any value. So no one's really going to want him. Um, but that's I would hope that the Packers would give him another chance. But that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like it's super official, more a speculation that he might no one might want to pay him. Got it. OK, cool. Um, just wanted to pull this up real quick and I apologize for the ads. I wish there was something we could do. They're flying like crazy here. Timu taking over the site here. Navy Federal Credit Union, too. If you guys are looking for a good bank, there you go. Um, let's see here. Sponsor the show. Uh, so I broke down the wide receiver room by cap hit. OK, and 2024 cap hit seventy five point nine million dollars against the cap for the L.A. Chargers. The L.A. Chargers did not make the playoffs. Think of the Bill Walsh quote. Wide receiver is the last piece you put in place. Right. You see these teams building the team around wide receiver play. And every April it's oh, the Packers should take a first round wide receiver. Packers take the first round wide receiver. The Chargers have taken first-round wide receivers. The Seahawks have. They're sitting at $60.3 million against the cap. Think of like your DK Metcalfs, your Tyler Lockett's like that, right? Raiders, they're the ones who traded for, obviously, Tay Adams, $55.8 million against the cap. Denver Broncos, Tim, how, how's their organization looking right now, man? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 52.2. You see how some of the worst teams in the league are right here at the top of the list. Now you get into the Cowboys. Obviously, they're a little closer to to the to the prize, although we absolutely boat raced them in the playoffs. You got the 49ers, but they're they're looking to put those last couple pieces in place, right? I mean, they, they made it to the freaking Super Bowl. Dolphins obviously fell flat on their face. Now, if we go down, you're going, where are the Packers, Clayton? I'm glad you asked. Look at this. 10.7. Make sure I got the column right. Yeah. $10.7 million cap hit for the entire wide receiver room. Only the Falcons have a cheaper wide receiver room than the Packers. Just absolutely wild that they got so much productivity out of the wide receiver room last year. And we are the second cheapest team when it comes to cap hit for the wide receiver spot. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, if you guys and gals would hit that like button for us. I know we got a ton of people in here. Look like we're showing 210 live. Um Hit that like button for us so other Packer fans can find this uh, content, find this channel. If you do like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. If you don't like this content, have a great day and pretend like we didn't even cross paths, okay? <laughs> Let's go that route. Um, anything else you guys want to add to the wide receiver room? Carly, Tim, anybody? Um, I'm just excited about the depth. I mean, that this room is built for a, for a playoff push um, and a grinding, grueling 17-game season, which, by the way, I hear they're – they're trying to get the NFLPA to agree to an 18th game. I don't know if you saw that. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was interesting. Yeah. How do y'all feel about it? Let's go around the horn. How do y'all feel about that? Because it's either people love it or they hate it. Well, it's simple. The fans love it because we want more football. The players hate it because it's more abuse on their body, and it's <laughs> extending the season. Uh, I do think that um, I don't see a scenario that uh, the preseason stays the same if they do add an 18th game. I think we got to they're gonna they're gonna end up scrapping a preseason game in order to make that make sense. Um, at least on the surface, that's how I would look at it. But yeah, the fan in me loves it. Uh, the guy that loves and respects these athletes and what they put their bodies through, um, I feel for them. Um, yeah. You know, it just is what it is. Good point. Carly, how do you feel about it? Like Tim, I mean, I love the idea of more football, right? But I have to ask, like, why add it? What's the NFL's reason? And it's probably just money. I haven't seen any reason for <laughs> what other, yeah, what other reason would it would it benefit anyone else other than just money? They have plenty of money. And then it's like, where what will it do to the quality of the game, right? What will it do to the quality? Is it going to positively impact the quality? Probably not. And so then I would say I, I don't want to I don't want to support it if it's going to make it worse all the way around for the players and the people who really are giving their lives and everything towards this. It's yeah, then I, I really can't support it if it's really just for the money. Yeah. Badger Trio makes a great point here in the chat. A member of the PTA posse here. Appreciate you, buddy. He said, um, it, you know, having 18 games would be an even number there. They're, now you would have nine home games, nine away games. That makes a lot of sense. It's kind of weird that it's odd, right? 18 oh, games. Omer says add another bye week. Yeah. 18. That's another. Ooh, approach. that's smarter. Give them, yeah. give them an early buy and a late buy. Mm -hmm. As a football fan, the more more football, the better, right? Um, but the the traditionalist in me, the history nerd, is also like, it's going to kind of mess with the numbers a little bit too. You know what I mean? It's kind of like baseball. They keep ex they kept extending, you know, the amount of games in a season. Now all of a sudden the home run record doesn't mean as much. And you know what I mean? Like, um, again, at the end of the day, if you, if you made me decide right now, Clayton, would, do you want an 18th game or not? I'd say, you know, I want 20 games to be honest with you. I, want some I like the even number though. Like, so you can have a team, you know, it's yes. impossible to finish 500. You're either below or above it yeah. um, with the odd number. So, hey, maybe – we know they're not going to go back to 16 games, so yeah. <laughs> the next yeah. even number is going to be 18. Back to the tag talk. Uh, Boz said we should franchise tag AFAM. <laughs> so, uh, we'll hit we'll hit AFAM with the knucklehead tag there. Right? How about that? We'll go that route. Uh, Exclusive Omer rights. <laughs> Omer in the chat earlier said lots of strong cornerbacks and safeties available for short and free agency this season. We made a list yesterday, guys. And we keyed in on the positions of needs, safety, linebacker, and corner. And we came up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 players on the defensive side of the ball. 13 players in just three positions that we would be okay with the Packers signing. We kind of looked at them and said, hey, I can see this signing here. At the top of the list was safety, Xavier McKinney at $13.5 million. He's only 25 years old. Uh, second on the list. And this is, this is organized by cost projected contract value, which on the surface would make you think these are the most valuable players. Therefore they're the best players. We know that's not the case in, in most cases, you know, but we'll, we'll list them in this, uh, this order of importance here. Linebacker, Frankie Lovu, um, Luvu, $10 million, 27 years old linebacker, Aziz Alshair, 6.75 million. He's only 26 years old safety. Geno stone, six and a half million, only 24 years old. That's one of my favorite free agents linebacker, Blake Cashman, 4.2 million, um, 27 years old. Keyshawn Nixon, cornerback, obviously slot corner, kick return specialist. They've got his projected value at 4.2 million, um, 26 years old. Which I, it's cool. I, I was thinking he was a little older than that, Tim. He's still a thought, man. Twenty six years old. You get him yeah. on a three or four year deal as a return. Going to be good for a while. Um, Bobby Wagner, linebacker, uh, four million dollars. He's thirty three years old. Safety Brandon Jones, three point three eight million um, at twenty five years old. Linebacker Tyrell Dotson, three point two million, twenty five years old. Safety Alohi Gilman. Might be my favorite of all of them because the price two point six million. He played for Ansley, um, who was the DC out there with the LA Chargers, who's now our defensive backs coach, our pass game specialist. Um, 
uh, or coordinator, I should say, uh, 26 years old, Aloy Gilman. You get him on a three-year deal, you're going to get his best years of ball. Uh, a guy who's familiar with the DB coach now, um, I think that would be a good signing at $2.6 million. Linebacker, I think it's – I've heard some people say Sean. I've heard other people say Sion Takataki. Two point five million. He's twenty eight years old. Linebacker Anthony Walker, two million, twenty eight years old, and then our very own Rudy Ford, twenty eight years old. There's not a projected market value. We paid him a million and a half last year. You add a little bit of inflation, I'd say you could probably get him for one point seven million. So there's plenty of people to choose from, Omer. I think you hit the nail nail on the head there, man. Um, the question is, how aggressive is Goody going to be in free agency? And I think the next couple of days leading up to the legal tampering period, which starts on March the 11th, you're going to see some how aggressive he is with moving these contracts around a little bit. Tim Carley, that's going to determine. I think it's going to be kind of a real a real look into the future of free agency of how aggressive Goody's going to be. And what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I, I definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Carly? You think uh, you think we're going to go shopping this offseason? I think precedent, there have been times, right, when, when Goody, in the past, when Goody has, you know, gone shopping, has done some big moves. I don't know if all the things are in place for that to happen this season, because I feel like it happens less often than, uh, than that. So I, I really, I have no idea. I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Got it. And you had a comment here uh, that you wanted to, to hit on. You said uh, you remembered about Mark Murphy's letter this week about a possible uh, kick return change. Is that right? What, what, what is that about? Yeah, we can switch to it. It's if you want. Oh God! To. <laughs> just get rid of it already. We hate changes, though. We, we already mean. know where we're heading with this crap. You know, just give them the ball in a twenty-five after a score, and just get rid of the kick, kick the game. <laughs> Carly, what did it say? What, what did the letter say? He wasn't catching any flack, was? Well, I don't remember what the question was, but I thought the answer was good. Um, to not, you know, say the whole thing, but basically the idea was is that the whole changes of the kick return has come about because the kick return technically is one of the most dangerous times in the game. And what he was saying is that that these changes have not all they have done is reduced the number of kick returns. They have not actually made it safer by the numbers, which right. makes sense, right? We could I think we could have seen that coming. But what he said is that the that some of the changes now they really are trying to design it to make it safer but allow four more kick returns to make it more exciting they want to keep the exciting part like mark murphy in his letter was like seemed very convinced that they want to keep the kick return as an exciting part and so there's moves to make it come back more exciting and safer which involves um switching to something more like the xfl does where certain players have to line up five yards apart um and but also, I, I have not watched the XFL, so I, I don't have a context for this to really explain it well. But something about moving moving closer to the way that they do it there to allow for some actual kick returns that would still be that would still be good or exciting. And he says, you know, the the owners would have to vote on it. But it was kind of cool to hear that that there is attention being paid to improving the quality of that as opposed to just phasing it out. Yeah. If I had been better prepared, I could have had the video from Pat McAfee's show yesterday. Uh, where he broke it down, you know, him obviously being, uh, I think PFF had him as the the number one punter of the decade when he played. Um, so whether you like McAfee's attitude or not, and I know he can be self-promoting at times and, and this and that, um, he kind of broke down some of the new role changes. And it surprised me because the the league was expecting there to be more, more explosive plays on the kick return, even though they added the touchback rule. This is according to McAfee, of course. And, He's saying that this new rule change is exactly what you were just talking about, Carly. They're trying to get more explosive plays involved with the kick the, the kick return, but they're just trying to do it in a safe manner where the players have to line up closer to each other. There's some kind of target zone they got to hit the ball into. Um, I didn't understand everything exactly. It probably would have been better to just play that clip. But, again, I, I didn't know we would be talking about this. I've got it pulled up on CBSNFL.com uh, here. What do you yeah. see? Kick and return teams would line up on the receiving team's 40 and 35 yard line respectively neither team could leave on the kickoff until the ball reaches the target zone which is the 20 yard line to the goal line similar to the kickoff in the xfl employed in 2023 another another change would be teams can only attempt onside kicks in the fourth quarter and if they are trailing that's another proposed change I mean, and like, the, I mean, I when, like this stuff. when is the last time we've seen an onside kick recovered successfully? I'd, I'd like to pull that stat. Very good point. Um, you know, this is just, 
I don't know. And anything you're going to lose me when you, when we hear about rule changes trying to make a game that's inherently dangerous safer. I don't I don't think you're you're going to make NFL football safer by screwing with the the kicking rules. Um yeah, the kicker in me is a little biased. I felt like back in the old school days when you kicked off, man, we kicked off from our own 25 for a while or 30 yard line. Now we've moved up to the 35. We're talking about moving up to the 40. You know, return game was more exciting when you when you had balls that were in play and returnable. You know, I, I think a lot of this is just going to result in automatic touchbacks and yeah. um, not right. anything more explosive or exciting, you know. And and they keep saying that's what they're going for is more excitement, more explosion. But I don't I just don't see how it could play out that way. William Gould in the chat said, get rid of Thursday night football if you really care about player health. See, that's the thing, like Amen. Yeah. And and that's where's that, where's that applause? What <laughs> There it is. <laughs> so what you're seeing is the league on the surface are trying to go, we care about the players. We want to make it safe. We want to make it, you know, but we don't want it to interfere with our money. So they've got to look at a way to, all right, how do we appear as if yep. we're focused on safety? What's the one thing that people care about the least in football? Probably the kickoff. That's what we attack. And that's why, Pat McAfee has been so vocal in hating it because obviously he made a living. There's a lot of people that make a living in special teams. I just I think like the, game is so good. the game is so good. You don't have to change anything. Now, as far as the Thursday night football stuff, I agree that if you really care about players health, don't make them play on a short week. But if you're asking the fan, I wish we had football one game every night of the freaking week. Yeah. <laughs> that's just me. Uh, I love it. I'm the, I'm the nerd that's going to be watching the heck out of the UFL this spring. I love, I just love football in general. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great point though, William, no doubt about it. Yeah. The only time football can I, can can I on a Thursday is during the, is during Thanksgiving. I've always felt that way. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Is a tradition. Go ahead, Carl. Oh, I was going to say what Tim said about like, you're not going to be able to make it safer. Like explode. If they want more explosive plays, explosive equals speed and distance and acceleration. And when you get guys that are that big running that fast, you're going to have injuries. I agree. Like ex- you can't, how can you have safer explosive plays without, I mean, it just seems like an impossibility unless they went back to the leather helmet. So everybody protected their heads more on their own instead of thinking they were invisible or invincible. I mean, maybe then the leather helmets actually would help them protect more because they wouldn't be stupid about running into each other. Yeah, no doubt. I, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an odd time. And, and there was a time too, like when it comes to player safety, I told you guys this, I was going, shut up, let's just play, quit being a bunch of babies, you know. And and then when I started seeing the information coming out about the suicide rate with the concussions and stuff, it smacked me in the face. And maybe I'm just getting old and soft, I don't know. But um, but that's why I love the things that they did. The league took the heads up initiative. You know, you start training right. younger players early. On start how to, league, how to, right? Yeah, stop lowering the head. You know, I, I, that stuff I'm 100% behind, but, you know. Yeah. Screwing with the specifics of the game, I don't, I don't yeah. see that making any impact. Uh, Reef in the chat said Nixon be like, "quote Coach, I know it's in the end zone, but it's me, Coach." I <laughs> got in trouble a little bit early in the year last <laughs> year. Listen, I was as excited as anyone for Keyshawn Nixon, but there was a couple of times he took that ball out of the end zone, and I was, I was cussing old Key. I was going to keep it in the end zone for God's sake. I'm tired of starting at the 18. What are we doing here? <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, that's the other thing, too. That's a big one for me, Doug. Doug says mandate grass, ban turf. I think every single football game should be played on grass. I also think every single football game should be played outside. I'm just like, okay. I cannot stand dome game. It drives me crazy, man. I can't stand to watch indoor football. Now, if you got a retractable roof, makes it a little more tolerable. I want the sunlight kissing the grass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want I want the weather to be involved. That, that – element of toughness really shows up in the game of football when you're having to play in cold rain in the mud or or even you know you don't even have to play in the mud anymore you guys want you want to see some cool stuff go back and watch some highlights from the 90s just type in rain game uh nfl and it'll pull up some of the best ones those guys slopping around that mud trying to trying to make something happen like that's when you get the the toughness comes out of every player the ice ball things like that now you talk to players though former players they're like I wish every game was played in the dome. That's the way they see it. Other than the turf, of course. They want the grass. So like I've always said, the only thing dumber than turf is turf outside. You know, you you think about like New York, right? 
you know, the, the Jets and the, and the, um, why am I losing it? The Giants, you know, they play out there in New Jersey and you've got an outdoor stadium with, you know, artificial turf that, that is a pain when it gets wet or snowy, you know, it right. becomes uh, basically an ice skating rink out there. Yeah, definitely. All right, Carly, you got anything else? We'll go ahead and wrap this up. We're at the hour mark here. Uh, this has been a fun conversation, man. We had a, a full house here. If you guys would hit that like button for us so other Packer fans can find this content, find this channel. If you're watching on Twitter, on X, uh, hit a retweet for us. Uh, share it. That way other people can find it too. Uh, we appreciate y'all making us a part of your morning here. Uh, Carly, you got anything else? No, no, I'm good. We had, we had a lot of stuff. It was a good talk. Yeah, it was fun, man. Tim, you got anything, Bob? Nope. Uh, ban turf. That's it. Ban turf. And two rules a day. Wash your hands, wash your butt, man. That's it. That's, that's all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hope everybody has a great day. We will see you tonight for Packers Total Access Live at 7 Central, 8 Eastern. Like I said, hit that like button for us on the way out. Um, you guys have a wonderful day. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go.